Hello, I'm Pastor Mike Lingenfelter. I'm the one who uh, wrote Stepping Forward, the book we've been doing for, or the devotional we've been doing for about 38 weeks, and this is the 39th week, and I have the privilege and honor to conclude this book with the 39th day. So let me read from the scripture. It's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 through 24. Here's how it reads. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints, and pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness and the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak, but that you also may know about my circumstances, how I am doing. Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make everything known to you. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, so that you may know about us, and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ with incorruptible love. Well, this devotion, it concludes with the final verses of Ephesians, and the main subject heading is our prayer. You know, Christians are a family, and as a family, it is important, as the Apostle Paul states here, that we are in prayer for one another. No matter what's going on in a person's life, uh, how difficult it is. You know, we all struggle at times. We all need our brothers and sisters in Christ to come alongside and to help us and to encourage us and also to bring us before the very throne of God. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us that at God's throne, it's the place we find mercy and grace. And it's important, therefore, for Christians to bring one another before God's throne to, in a sense, intercede on their behalf, to show, um, not only show a love for one another through the process of praying for one another, but also to encourage one another that we are praying for each other. I mean, prayer has many facets to it, and as we traveled through this daily devotional, we've learned, no doubt, many of those facets of prayer and how important they are. But as a conclusion here, when the Apostle Paul says, hey, you know, pray about, pray for me. Don't forget about me. Pray for the other saints. Now, he's not talking about praying for the saints of the first century. I mean, they're already, they've already died. They're in heaven. But what he is praying, or what he is, is saying, is that we be in prayer for the saints today, because it's so important you know, it brings fellowship, it brings unity, it encourages one another, and it helps us in the sense of knowing that our family is caring for us and bringing our, our requests, those things that are hurting, those things that are troubling, those things that are most difficult in our lives right now. It's our brothers and sisters are bringing those things before the living God in prayer. So, as we conclude this book here, please, if you are born again Christian, please be in prayer often for your brothers and sisters. Don't neglect that. And encourage them to be in prayer for you. In order to do that, you need to share a little bit about your life with those that you know you can trust. Hopefully, every born again Christian you can trust. Also, when the church body gets together in prayer, I want to encourage you to be there. Uh, we do this on Sunday nights. We spend a uh, good quality time where we all are praying uh, individually in order. But it's so important that we do this together and that we do it individually when we're not together. Also, I want you to know that the only way to be completely forgiven of sin the only way to have a right relationship with the living God is to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Jesus went to the cross, that's God in the flesh. He went to the cross while we were yet sinners to die for us there, to have our sin nailed to him. And then three days later, he resurrected from the grave. And the whole purpose was to place us in a position where we are reconciled with God the Father. 
If you have not come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, know that Jesus went to the cross and provided the means for salvation, for forgiveness of sin, and for you to be in a right relationship with, with the living God, the Creator. And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, it's faith in Jesus and what he did on that cross that saves people's lives. The moment that you come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior ought to be the very moment that you begin praying. Pray for others. Pray for our leaders. Pray for those who don't know Jesus as Savior. Pray for the brothers and sisters who do, but are struggling and having difficulty. Pray. And to know Jesus, pray. Come to Him. Let Him know that you're a sinner just like me and that we need the salvation of Jesus Christ. That's one of the best areas to begin praying. And then you merge right in to praying for one another. The body of Christ is a unity. It's a group of people of all different colors, made up of male and females, that have placed faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. One unity, one body, who love each other, struggle with each other, who care for each other, and who care about the lost. We pray together, we pray individually, and we, we do so with a heart that reaches out to God, knowing that God can do the impossible. Thank you for taking this journey, this 39-day journey, if you will. It took us 39 weeks, one a week, uh, through stepping forward. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're in the area, I stop by First Baptist Church in Benson. We'd love to see you and meet you. Thank you. Goodbye.